Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and I would like to welcome you to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss a data pre-processing task. We are going to discuss data transformation. And of course, we are going to also see the difference and the distinction between data transformation and data massaging. All right. So what we are going to do is, first we are going to look at two examples and once we have a feel for these two examples, then we are going to start discussing uh, the difference between data transformation and data massaging. And after that, we are going to also see a few more things about data transformation. All right, let's get started. So the first example we have um, is the example of data transformation. In this example, you can see that you know, we are trying to see the relationship between um, mean brain mass and mean body mass for uh, species. Um, so each dot in this scatter plot is one species, including human species. And because there are values here that are very large comparing to the rest of the uh, data objects and the populations of species here, um, you know, the visualization space has been consumed by these larger values. And because of that, it's very hard for us to see any relationship here. So we can transform the data here by uh, doing log transformation. Basically, instead of using the actual value of each of these values, we use the log of these values, right? So if we were to do that, we would see this new visual, right? Now on the X and Y axis, we have the log transform attribute. So now here, because we were able to properly transform the data, we can see that, you know, there is this relationship between these two attributes. And, and now because these data is transformed in an appropriate way, the larger values are not consuming the visualization. Space. So that's example of uh, data transformation. Let's look at an example of data massaging. So here's an example of uh, a data set that have 100 data points, right? Here we have 100 data points and each these, these data points are basically showing us the oscillation and variations of the noise that a car engine creates, right? So these are 100 data points that have been captured um, in um, 0.1 millisecond from an engine of a car, right? So the nature of this data set is of time series, and we can see that here, right? But we can, for the purpose of uh, doing uh, classification, for example, we can do some morphological data feature extraction here. And that is a type of data transformation, right? So uh, if we were to do this morphological feature extraction, instead of having all of these 100 data objects or 100 numbers, we could just have uh, the number of peaks in this uh, visual, right? We've got four peaks, and then we've got five valleys, and then the maximum oscillation in this 100 data objects, 100 data points is uh, this number, right? So now uh, we can just use these three values for um, all of these possible data objects, right? So for example, we can have these, these five data objects and these five data objects that had 100 data attributes, each of them. So these are 100 data attributes, right? Data objects, 100 attributes, time series. Now we can summarize them and present them with these three new attributes, right? So now we have completely created different types of attributes. This is not of time series nature now, and it is called a feature extraction. And because we have changed the essence of you know these attributes we have completely come up with new attributes we call these types of data transformation data massaging you heard me right data transform data massaging is a type of data transformation so this is a this is a data transformation but at the same time it is also data massaging 
So uh, the distinction between the two can be summarized in this one sentence. You can see that when we have data transformation, we are basically making some changes. And those changes are not to the extent that we change the nature of data objects or the nature of the attributes. But for data transformation, we actually change the nature of at least one of these data objects or the, or, uh, the, the attributes. So let's learn a little bit more about uh, data transformation. So uh, by and large, there are three reasons that we might be doing data transformation. We might be doing it out of necessity. Uh, this is when your data cannot be processed at the state it is by your tool. For instance, uh, multi-layer perceptron, MLP, the most famous artificial neural network, only works with numbers. Right? You cannot expect MLP to be able to uh, handle categorical attributes. So out of necessity, if you want to use uh, MLP for this data that has categorical attribute, you have to transform the categorical attribute into numerical ones first. And that's out of necessity. Then there is a second reason, it's correctness. Um, in these types of uh, you know, data transformation, if you did not transform your data, your results are going to be biased. So, for example, if you were to use um, k-means algorithm, which, remember, uses distance between the data objects and it's working, uh, to come up with clusters uh, without having normalized your data, right? Do you remember? Um, you know, when you calculate the distance, it is important to uh, normalize the data because the attributes that have larger scale are going to become more important inadvertently. And we don't want that. So for our results to be correct, we need to normalize our data. And that is because we want the result to be correct. And that's why we transform, we normalize the data set. Then another reason is for the effectiveness. Uh, sim simply, if you were not to uh, transform your data, uh, your result would not be incorrect, but would not be as effective as it could be. For instance, if you want to uh, use decision tree as a way to summarize your data in regard to a dependent attribute, for you to see what are the um, you know, rules and what are the patterns in your data that lead to the change of a dependent attribute. If you were to uh, transform your numerical attributes to categorical one, um, your task is going to be more effective because you know at the end what you want to look at is that decision tree uh, that is going to uh, sort of like tell you what are the rules and you know our brain work better with categorical data. So if you were to do this transformation, then uh, our analysis would be more effective. So that's another reason we might consider data transformation. Now that we know uh, these um, reasons uh, for data transformation, let's look at another distinction between um, data transformation and data, uh, data massaging. So, uh, you know, when we talk about data transformation and data massaging, like I said, data massaging is a part of data transformation. So if you're doing data massaging, it is also a type of data transformation. But when we do, um, you know, data massaging, it's more of for the task of being more effective and for the reason for being more effective in our analysis. With, without data massaging, uh, we could still do the analysis, uh, but when we do the data transfer, data massaging, our analysis becomes more effective. Uh, you know, for the reasons of correctness and necessity, we normally, uh, we never do data massaging. So that's the distinction I want to uh, bring to your attention here. And lastly, in the uh, future five videos, we're going to go over uh, all of these common tools for data transformation, normalization and standardization, binary coding, ranking transformation, and discretization, discretization uh, attribute construction, feature extraction, log transformation, smoothing, aggregation, and binning. Uh, here you can see uh, the type of uh, data transformation or massaging they are. You can see that attribute construction and feature extraction, they are a type of data massaging. And you can also know that because they are part of data massaging, they're also a data transformation. Uh, but normalization and standardization, binary coding, ranking transformation, discretization, 
uh, discretization and log transformation smoothing aggregating and binning these are only uh, type of data transformation all right in the next video we're going to start talking about normalization and standardization.